Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Learning to program from scratch with no prior experience is very difficult. And a common thing I always hear from people just learning, they get frustrated. You know, it's just, I'm just not getting it. I can't get this stuff. And more often than not, it comes down to a lack of patience and a lack of willingness to put in the time, put in the effort, put in the hours, put in the repetitions to practice this stuff and get good at it. Right? Think about any other skill you've ever learned, whether you're playing a sport, basketball, football, playing a video game or dancing or gardening or woodworking, whatever your hobby is, whatever you're good at, how did you get good at it? You did it a thousand times, right? You put in so many hours, that's how you got good at it. And programming is no different. And I think where a lot of beginner developers mess up is two, they're not willing to put in that work or maybe their expectations weren't set correctly that this is hard, it's gonna take a long time, it's gonna take a lot of practice. Um, but they're not willing to do that, not willing to go back and repeat stuff and put in the reps. And I also think they try to build an actual product that the, the idea they have, maybe the inspiration for why they learned how to code before learning the fundamentals. And I totally understand, that's the fun part, right? Probably what inspired you to learn how to code, maybe you had an app idea, a website idea, and you just wanna build that, right? You learn a little bit and you start tinkering around with that. And I, I've been there, like I understand that's the fun part. Sometimes the fundamentals aren't that fun. But I like to think of it like this chart. And the bottom one that starts off slow and then curves up rapidly, that is you taking the time to put in the reps early, learn the fundamentals, get good at those. That will speed you up so much in the future. It's like a good investment. Whereas, yes, you can still make progress, just like trying to build your product right away and learning what you need to learn as you go, but you're not gonna understand the underlying fundamentals and you're just gonna move slowly and slowly. So while in the beginning, taking the time to practice, practice, practice may seem like you're not making progress, like you see in this chart, it really makes up for itself in the long run. Because think about it, jumping right into trying to build a product when you don't understand how to program, that would be like going and playing a basketball game when you're still learning how to dribble and shoot. That's not gonna go well. Or what if you hopped in a video game tournament and you don't even know what the buttons do? Like, it's just not gonna go well. It's gonna be rough. So what do I mean by learn the fundamentals? I'm talking about the fundamentals of your platform. For me, I'm an iOS developer, so that would be learning iOS and iPhones, iPads. Like learn the fundamentals of that platform, that language. If you're a web developer, same thing. If you're a game developer, same thing. I'm not necessarily talking about you know, computer science fundamentals, data structures and algorithms, binary trees. I'm not saying those are useless at all. That's great knowledge. But again, for the beginners trying to learn programming for the first time and you don't have a computer science degree background, it's probably better to start again with the fundamentals of your platform. So as an iOS developer, let's use like the iPhone as an example, right? You're building a bunch of small little apps and, and you know, let's just call them projects because you're not building a full consumer app, right? Maybe you build something with the camera where you can, you know, take a picture and put a filter on it. So, you know, something simple. Maybe you work with maps for a little bit. Maybe you work with ARKit, have some fun. Maybe build a little game. Just a bunch of different little apps that are just small projects that you can, again, learn the fundamentals of your platform and it's repetition, right? Because a lot of the, the, the programming basics and concepts you'll reuse from app to app to app. So that's how you get that repetition. That's how you get that practice. And like I said, it may seem like you're just kind of wasting your time on these small projects, but back to this chart, over the long run, getting this experience, learning the fundamentals of your platform will pay off. Maybe you've been in a situation where you've asked like a more senior developer, a more experienced one, a question and they know the answer off the top of their head. It's not because they just watched one tutorial and they got it. No, they've probably done that thing a thousand times or they struggled for so long on that topic, banged their head against it, finally had that breakthrough moment, so much so that they'll never forget, right? They really struggled with it. And again, that's what it takes. It takes the repetition, it takes the struggle, it takes the practice. And again, I think the fault of a lot of beginners is again, maybe their expectations weren't set properly, but they're just not willing to do that. They're not willing to do the repetitions, do the practice. So that's why I always recommend building these small projects. I, I use iOS as an example, but if you're a web developer, build some small you know, websites. Uh, if you're a game developer, build a bunch of different small games. Maybe try playing around with a first person shooter, a real time strategy game, a, a fighter, a, a shoot em up. Just do a lot of variety within your field. Um, but again, keep them super small, keep them to experiments. But a good side effect of like building all these small projects, showcasing your skills, is you're gonna kind of build a little bit of a portfolio along the way when it comes time to get that first job, you can showcase you know, what, you've, what you've built, your work. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a great way to get that developer portfolio up and running very quickly. Now, of course, if you're a web developer, 
you probably shouldn't use Squarespace to show off because your job is to build websites. So web developers, close your ears, I'm not talking to you, but you know, like myself, mobile app developer, if you're a game developer, maybe you're into AR, VR, machine learning, AI, whatever, not everybody's a web developer. And if you're not a web developer, I think Squarespace is a great way to get that portfolio up and running. Now I know we're developers, we can probably figure out how to build a simple website, but remember there's an opportunity cost to your time. Like it does take a little bit of time to build and maintain a website with all the different browser compatibilities, making sure it looks good on the phone, an iPad, a giant iMac, right? You got so many different screen sizes. It is just a lot that goes into building and maintaining a website. I would rather spend my time building apps or if you're a game developer, maybe you'd rather be building games. So like I said, let Squarespace take that off your plate. They have all kinds of beautiful themes. They handle all the SEO and the analytics for you. Again, they take it off your plate. It's very nice. So when you're ready to build that portfolio, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So to sum all this up for you beginner developers, don't be afraid to put in the practice, put in the time, put in the repetitions. That's how you got good at whatever you're good at. Programming is no different. You can't watch one tutorial, read one blog post, fumble your way through building it, and then now you know it. No, you gotta do it over and over and over and over again. Practice, practice, practice.